grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, dear friends. Good morning, Father. Today we celebrate the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. And it's an important moment in the life of our church. It is the most sacred mystery in, in the life and experience of this church and, and so we try to make sense of what this means to us today as a people we continue to pray and ask that the Lord may sustain himself in our midst with his blood and body and so in this mass I'll be praying for all of you especially those who are unable to participate in his body and blood today I pray for your families I pray for your loved ones and I pray for everyone who has asked our prayers at this time. I'd like to specifically pray for Jerry Schoenfeld, who is battling a very severe form of disease. We pray and ask that God will help him find healing and recovery. And also offer mass for our patients here at Walter Reed. We pray for our doctors and our nurses who are working tirelessly to bring healing to our sick. And now to prepare ourselves, dear friends, to offer this mass in all your intentions, let us call to mind our sins and be deeply sorry for them. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repent and Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins. May he bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, earth peace to his people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, God Almighty Father, Lord God, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you will honor the Holy One, you will honor the Lord, you will honor the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your holy body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen, amen.
reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord your God has directed all of your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Do not forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its sarap serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Thank, Thank you to God. God. St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we though many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Gospel according to Saint John. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh. 
for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as a living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. My dear people of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. It is um Today is an important, such an important day. And I'm going to make three points. And I decided to make each point from the three readings. One point each for each reading. In the, in the gospel reading, I like to begin with the gospel reading. And I like to begin with the question the Jews asked Jesus after he had said, he had told them that he is a living bread. The question was, how can this man speak like this? How can this be that we would have to eat his body and drink his blood just to live? What is he talking about? I know you and I don't ask that question. But our behavior and our attitude, we quarrel like the Jews did. Because there are many of us who come to church every day, and it's different this period, the last several months. We've not been able to participate and attend masses and receive communion on a daily basis. But there are so many of us who receive communion daily and treat it with the same attitude that the Jews had when Jesus told them, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you have no life in you. The question was, what's that? What does that mean? How does that mean? That means the attitude was one of doubt, was one of disbelief, was one of just laughing at what Jesus had just said. And I know that that is the attitude of most of us believers. We come to church, sit down, the entire 30 minutes 45 minutes or one hour, depending on how long the priest preached. And Mass is over, and it's time for communion, and we come and receive communion as though it was a routine. It is not a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. And so we never treat the Eucharist for what it is. So the attitude, underlying attitude is one that we don't treat the Eucharist as seriously as Jesus intended for it to be. And so believe it or not, our attitude is, quest is questioning. This doesn't matter. I don't need this. I'm just doing it. And the question is, who are you doing it for? When you wake up from your seat to receive the Eucharist, who are you doing it for? If you're doing it for the Lord Jesus, how often do you take the time to think about what it is that the Lord is offering you? What it is that you are receiving when you wake up from your seat to receive the Lord? Maybe we need to repent of our own unbelief. Because there are too many of us 
who don't believe that what we receive is Jesus. Otherwise, how is it possible that we receive Jesus with the same mouth and with that same mouth we say all kinds of terrible things about others who are the images of God himself. Only because maybe they are different from us or they worship differently from us or they have a lifestyle that is different from us. How is that possible? Because when I receive Jesus, I become the embodiment, the tabernacle of God. How is it from that same tabernacle, if I believe what I receive, how is it from that same tabernacle that I'm able to do monstrous and terrible things to others? How is that possible? So, so our underlying attitude becomes that like the Jews, we don't take the words of Jesus seriously. We're questioning the meaning of those words. We're doubting the meaning and the power behind those words. Otherwise, when I receive Jesus, as I am walking in the words of John Chrysostom, I should become the visible presence of Christ wherever I go. That should be the transformation that takes place in me when I participate in this great gift that Jesus, if I understand what this gift is, it should change and transform me. Now, generally, I think I don't know who said that, but generally when we eat food, the food becomes part of us. When we eat Jesus, we become part of Jesus. That's the difference. When we eat Jesus, we become more like him. When we eat food, food becomes more like us. But does that happen in my life, in your life? When we receive Jesus Christ. If it doesn't happen. Then we are no different than these Jews. Who were questioning Jesus. And were doubting. The power of his word. And the meaning of this sacrament. And so maybe that's something. We need to begin to repent of. Because if we do not. The blessing of the Eucharist. Doesn't happen. Jesus promised. Who, he, whoever eats my body and drinks my blood. Will have life. We may not. We may have death. Because don't forget what the apostle said when you read 2 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I think that's verse 28 following. It says some of us are sick. Some have died. Because we treated the body and blood of Christ irreverently. So we may, we may eat the body and blood of Christ not for life but unto condemnation. Because we did not believe what we ate. We did not treat with reverence what we, what we received. So that's important for us as we celebrate this outstanding feast that God gave us in himself. And in the second reading, we hear how the Apostle Paul articulates Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? And the bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one. We do many are one body, for we partake of the one loaf. And the apostle will go on somewhere else and speak of how Christ Jesus has destroyed the divisions and the differences. And I said, henceforth, there's no longer Jew or Gentile, no Greek, no slave. Henceforth, there's no woman, no man. Henceforth, there is only one body of Christ. Now, communion, by its, by its meaning, has to do with a coming together, a sharing in a meal. Another thing that, I, that, that, that spoke to me when I read this text was, Philip, how often do you gather with your brothers and sisters, different, different as they are in color, in, in lifestyle, in the way they think? How often do you gather with them and recognize that you are one? That your brother who is white is you. That your sister who is black is you. How often do we gather and realize that we are one? That even my brother who does not worship in that same church with me, but believes in God, is one with me. How often does that come to my mind? We gather and sometimes we, see, we choose and see who is sitting where. 
and we choose the other seat because we don't want to sit near someone. Is that not what we do when we come to church? So I, I say to myself, do we really understand when we gather, that we gather, we're gathering together because we have been invited in this space by God himself for communion as a body, one body, sharing the unity that is, that is typified in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what we celebrated a few weeks ago, a few, a few days ago. Trinity. It is that communion. I mean, that's something else we need to repent of. Because as believers, it is, it is unacceptable that we come and share in the body of Christ. And yet, we don't realize that we are one. We still maintain and emphasize our differences over and above everything else that Jesus invited us into. If you have been invited and you accepted this invitation, yes, like Jesus, you must overcome the divisions and the petty differences that society emphasizes and projects for us. Scripture says that henceforth we must be led by the gospel of Christ, not, not conform ourselves to the pattern of the world. And every day we come in, we allow what the world defines, how the world defines each other for us, affect how we come and treat each other in church. I don't know how that makes sense. But maybe that's something else we need to do. Reflect of and maybe repent of. That each day you come in here, remind yourself before you leave your home, remind yourself where you're going to. I'm going to be family with everyone that God has invited us together. I didn't choose to be here. I only accepted an invitation because I have belief that when I gather, I go to that place. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, no longer free or slave, no longer woman or man, no longer straight or, 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 or gay. We are all one body in Christ. I didn't say that. That's what the Bible said. How often do we come and spend the rest of our 30 minutes or 40 minutes judging the way someone looks, the way somebody is comporting himself? And forget what we were here for. We are here to build the unity that Jesus has invited us into. And so each time we celebrate the Eucharist, that's what we call to. It is a unity of God's people. And see what happens in the first reading. I like this one. Moses said to the people, remember how for 40 years, now the Lord your God has directed all of your journey in the desert. He let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does man live. Somewhere else it says, He tested you by afflict with affliction to find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. Wow, I like that one. He tested you with affliction to find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. It's been about four months now, the last time we were able to gather and celebrate the Eucharist and have the opportunity to participate in the Eucharist. It wasn't 40 years, four months. And in these four months, I'm sure the Lord did this to see what the Eucharist means for us. Because deprivation sometimes makes us question the value of things, the value of people to us. Maybe the Lord also took this opportunity from us for four months to test and see if we understand what the Eucharist means to you. There are so many of us who have gone through these four months without ever thinking because we have this sentimental attachment, maybe because we were raised to receive communion every day. We have this emotional and sentimental attachment to the Eucharist, just as we have to the flag or to the anthem or to the concept of our country or to a lot of other things. But we don't truly understand what all of that means. Jesus decided these last four months to take this away from us. To see if we would, after all of this, have a different relationship with the Eucharist when we have the opportunity to return to it. 
did you take the time inside the last four months to reflect on what that meant to you? For some of us, it was it didn't really mean much to us. For some, it was just complaining like everyone else. But it wasn't the fact that I missed my friendship with Jesus. It was just, well, I'm receiving communion because that's what I've been doing. So we miss that thing we have been doing. No, we miss the relationship that we have with Jesus. We didn't miss that. I don't know how many people thought about that. Wow. Four months. Never heard his voice. Never felt his touch. Never feel that, that calmness that he gives me when I receive him. That's not what we're thinking about for many of us. But that's exactly what this sacrament should mean to us. It's a personal way that Jesus gives us himself. He gives us something so precious. And yet, it has become routine for too many of us. He took it away. Deprivation sometimes gives new meaning to things we took for granted. I hope that over the last four months, we have taken more time to reflect on what the Eucharist means to you as a person. It is an invitation by Christ for a personal relationship with him. Otherwise, we would have done everything. And unlike St. Paul, we would have run the race. We would have run it so poorly. I hope that like St. Paul, we will run the race and run it well. Because we understood exactly what this was about. So always I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are still the delight of Almighty God. And that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one Lord, Lord the Father, Lord Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all, all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the only begotten Son, Son of God, God Son of the Father, before all ages, God, 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 God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made be consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, according to the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us lift our hearts and our minds and ask for God's grace and ask for His Holy Spirit to touch our hearts and to open us up to this new relationship with the Lord in the Eucharist, even as we pray for all our other needs. For the church, as people we who gather in hope in the midst of darkness, that we may be a place of welcome, a voice of the marginalized, and an example of the promise found in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For our elected leaders and candidates for public office, that they may seek always to increase participation and engagement to bring about the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who are sick and for those who care for them, in care centers, hospitals, and hospice programs, particularly remembering the sick here at Walter Reed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those from our community traveling this week, that they may enjoy time with family and friends, and find renewal and safe journeys. For those who celebrated their birthdays within the week, that the graciousness of God 
will continue to bless them with life, faith, and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all those who struggle with depression and anxiety and addiction, that they may find serenity and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. In the silence of our hearts, let us pray for our other personal needs. <clears throat> we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who have died, that they may have rest now in the loving arms of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. Most gracious God, listen to these concerns we have brought before you. As we bring them into the hands of our Blessed Mother, asking her prayers as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the, the Lord, Lord is with you. Blessed are thou amongst women, and, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. You may sing. Blessed thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands to the brain of glory. Amen. Our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gift of unity and peace, whose signs have been seen in this ministry, in the offerings we present here. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the last supper with his apostles, Establishing for ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by the one faith and united by the one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration as we with all the angels cry out and without end acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, for son in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. 
at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. The Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the second acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When, when we eat this bread, bread and, and drink this cup, we, we proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord, until you come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all the bishops with the religious, the laity, and all the clergy. Remember also our departed brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and, and with him, him and in him, him O God, God Almighty Christ, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Let us rise and pray with the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, we said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. And Amen. with your spirit. Dear friends, may we offer each other the sign of that peace. Shalom. And for all of you who are watching from our hospital beds or your hospital rooms and from around the world, from us to all of you, God's peace, now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. This is Jesus, our bread of life. He takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter out of my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. At this moment of spiritual communion, for all those who are unable to receive the body of Christ, let us pray. Most compassionate, ever loving God, for all your children watching, watching around the world who are unable to participate physically in your body and blood today. We beg you, as the pastor that you are, bring your body to minister to their needs spiritually. May they receive the full measures of your blessing this day, spiritually, in their hearts, in their souls, and in their lives. And we ask all of this in your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, Archangel. Defend, defend us in our battle. Be our protection against, against the wickedness and sinners of the devil. devil. May God rebuke him with humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the wings of souls. Amen. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for being here today. It's always, it's always a beautiful thing to gather in God's presence. And I wish you a very, very blessed day and an outstanding week. If you forget everything I said, don't forget this, that forever, it's now 9.45, and you are still the delight of the Almighty God. And God loves you very much. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God enrich your lives. May God bless and sanctify your lives. May God adorn your lives with his love. May he fill you with his Holy Spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God bless you, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.